What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life out here in the backcountry of Moab, Utah. And today, got a little bit of a special adventure for you guys. It just so happens that I ran into the Epic Family Road Trip, which is a family of five that have been traveling on the road in a couple of Jeeps for up to seven years. I've watched their YouTube channel for a couple of years now and totally enjoy their content. And it just so happened that we bumped into each other on a trail out here in Moab. And so today we're gonna go travel out to Hoorah Pass and beyond out to Chicken Corners, do some camping, some adventuring, and see what this part of the country has to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome aboard the adventure. down We've got some bumpy roads ahead so it makes the ride a lot smoother I'm checking my uh, tire pressure because I really softened it up for the slick rock when we we're in uh, slick rock state park there just got out here to the end of the valley where we start climbing up to Hoorah Pass and we had to stop and let Lando the dog out of the Jeep and get some energy out. Now Lando is used to getting out and running beside the Jeeps on the trail and they say he does uh, about 20 miles a day outside the Jeep running which is probably double that the way dogs like to run around. So anyways we're here out in the valley parked up and taking a bit of a break. It's super cool to have company along on the trail, out for an adventure, and uh, looking forward to spending time with these guys around the fire, exchanging stories about overlanding and living in vehicles and getting out here to the backcountry.
So we were climbing up the rocks here on this trail. And it gets a little bit rugged out here. And one of the boys popped a wheelie and came down on a rock that in turn bent their rear brake lever up into the engine case, which in turn punctured it. So we're gonna see if we can do a little trail side repair and keep those guys uh, on the trail with us. That's kind of where the rear disc, my rear brake goes. It's twisted up for sure. Well, we attempted a little bit of trail repair with a bar of soap. I'm just gonna see if that actually work. You gotta do what you gotta do out on the trail. So at this point, he's just gonna go cruise around. Warm it up, see if the soap will actually hold before we get too much further out on the trail. We don't want to get all the way out there and find out that that fix isn't going to work. Wow. <laughs> Not seeing a drip as of right now. That That's soap good. really kind of hardens up into uh, almost like a wax. a wax or something. Yeah. yeah. And just as a quick public service announcement, don't forget to head on over to www.livingthevanlife.com and get yourself some LTVL swag. We've got LTVL t-shirts, we've got hoodies, hats, stickers, and more to come. We're working on new stuff, new concepts every week, trying to keep the website updated. So, www.livingthevanlife.com, go check it out. Get yourself a t-shirt, get yourself a hoodie. It's getting cold out there. Hoodies are selling like hotcakes off the press.
But we just climbed up here to the top of Hoorah Pass and that trail getting up here is always a fun one. It's a good challenge for the driver as well as the equipment. And so that's one of my favorite parts about getting up here. But then once you're up here at the top, it's the view. And as you guys have seen in my past videos when I've come up here onto Hoorah Pass and Chicken Corners, it's just a spectacular view of the vistas and overlooking the valleys and the canyons down below. So we just made the trek up Hoorah Pass. What did you guys think of that? Amazing. It's so fun to be back on the trail because we've been kind of staying in one place in Moab for the past few weeks. And so getting back here and also seeing more of the backcountry of Utah and Moab has been amazing. And this trail is just stunning. So. so yeah, I mean, we've been here twice before to Moab area and mainly just stuck to that Slick Rock State Park. That's kind of like the, the famous spot right there. But you know, little did we know you can come back just a couple miles mm -hmm. into the backcountry and this is here, you know, all this beauty and the fun trail. I mainly film for our family channel, which is the Epic Family Road Trip. We're just a family of five and now one dog out <laughs> traveling the world and hopefully inspiring other families to do the same because you you know, you really can get out there and do it no matter what vehicle you're in or what you're doing. You're up here in a van, which is amazing. And yeah. we see tons of side-by-sides and bikes and it's just about getting out and exploring. That's kind of the, the main mm -hmm. thing about Epic is to inspire other people. So the Adventure Guys is my brother Daniel and I's new channel and a dream of ours for many years now has been to get some adventure bikes. We saw some guys actually like four years ago going up to Alaska, they were on some big BMWs. And from that point on, we were like, that seems like an amazing way to travel, a really raw experience of, of the world. So about four months ago, we got two KTM 690s and started outfitting them for adventure. And here we are now <laughs> exploring the backcountry exactly how we had always dreamed to. So like I said, guys, I'm out here with the Epic Family Road Trip. And Pete, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the channel. Yeah, so uh, my name's Peter. I'm the dad, uh, me and my wife and three kids and one dog. We've been on the road for six years. In November, we'll be starting our seventh year full time uh, doing stuff like this, just enjoying life and hitting a lot of back country. So uh, the channel's called Epic Family Road Trip and you can find us on YouTube and Instagram. And we, uh, we just get out and uh, we have three values. We talk about work, play, and care. The work, because it takes a lot of work to uh, do anything in life and the only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. So uh, work is a very important value for us. Play, because you know life is short and you've, if you can get out and play as much as possible, it's very healthy for you. And then care for us, that means create a remarkable experience. Try to leave the places we meet and the people we visit a little better than we found them. And uh, we keep those values top of mind and we have a lot of fun doing it. Very cool. That's what it's all about. Yeah, it and, is. And when life brings you out to locations like this, I mean, this is what I'm always feeling when I get out here is the fact that I've got all the comforts of home, but yet we're way out here in the middle of the backcountry, and there's a certain kind of comfort in that. There is. And you look at the, the surroundings, you say very few people get to actually access this and, and spend a night out here in comfort. So um, yeah, these places like this, we've got the, the San Juan Mountains snow capped in the background and then just a huge vista of canyons. It's, it's pretty spectacular. So we, we love every minute of it. From this point in the trail, we've got about another 15 miles of trail to get down into the area, what we call chicken corners. And that's where we're going to set up camp and cook some food and just share some stories about overlanding and living in vehicles and all the fun stuff that comes along with it.
Well, we just made it out here to the end of Chicken Corners and the trail out here is rough and rugged but it's a fun adventure. The van did awesome. The Jeeps made it out here of course exceptionally well and then of course the boys on their adventure bikes made it just made it made it all look easy for sure. Uh, but at this point we're gonna get camp set up. We're gonna build a fire, cook some food, and enjoy some van life and Jeep life of course too.
Maybe I just want to change the whole lighting here. Thank you. Yeah. Fill it up, huh? <laughs> Perfect. Sweet guys. Well, thanks so much, Ed. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you so guys much. for yeah. coming out and doing this adventure together. It's been awesome. Yeah. 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 Fun. It's so good to have the company. I do so much of this solo and by myself that mm. it's nice to have company along That's for sure. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's a little quiet. It's because it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you did all of it over the fire. Yeah. You didn't use any propane, nothing. Yep. I think that's fantastic. When you make enough and you have leftovers, it makes for really good leftovers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know how spaghetti is the next day? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. You can't go wrong. What's your guys' favorite meal to cook out on the road? She curry. definitely curry? likes curry, yeah. Mm. How about you, Pete? I don't know. Shepherd's pie. Um, Pecan's pie. Mm. We make like a kale soup. That's oh, really yeah? Good. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things. Oh, far out. I love anything Italian. Carol, ma Carol makes um, uh, lasagna? zucchini lasagna. Ooh, so nice. instead of uh, noodles, she uses zucchini for layers. Yeah. But we had a wonderful time sitting around the campfire enjoying the meal and really just telling stories about living on the road and traveling and off-roading and overlanding etc. Caught a good night's sleep, woke up this morning into this amazing view. I actually thought it'd be cool to take a moment and have these guys give us a walk around of their Jeeps and how they've been living in it with a family of five full time for a number of years. It's always unique being out here on the road meeting people and discussing the different ways of having the mobile lifestyle. The cool thing is that these guys have been on the road for six plus years. Here in the last couple of years, they have had 
two Jeeps with their family of five. Before that, they were doing it in one single Jeep. Just cool to see how these guys are actually making it happen. This is things that families dream of for years and years and never do it because they never think it's possible. But these guys are the perfect testament to the fact that it actually is possible. And it's not just possible to go out and do it on the weekends, but these guys do this day in and day out for years and years on end. And they're proving that it's actually possible. Hey guys, uh, my name is Peter. I'm Carol. Carol. We're the parents of the Epic Family Road Trip. We've got three uh, teenage kids that are with us and our dog, Lando, and we've been on the road for six years. We're just doing adventure travel together, seeing all kinds of wonderful places around the world. We spend most of our time exploring the backcountry of America right now, Canada and the US, and we've done some international travel and hope to do more. And if you wanna watch our adventures, we're on uh, YouTube at Epic Family Road Trip or Instagram Epic Family Road Trip as well. And uh, we'll take you for a little walk around, show you how we manage that with so many people. So this is the original Jeep. It was actually Carol's, my wife's everyday driver. It's a 2012 and um, we, we started off by towing it behind our, our motorhome. And over the years, as we got out here on the road, we discovered overlanding and that opened a whole new world to us. We realized there's a whole industry around it and we could take that stock Jeep and build it out for what we're doing now. This one's named Vandy and that's kind of a South African word for traveler. The other one's named Worsley, which is uh, after Frank Worsley from the Endurance Expedition, which you can look up and read about. It's a pretty cool story. It's one of our favorite stories. So, but yeah, so it's a, a basic um, Jeep, but we've upgraded the suspension to handle all the weight because we're carrying, you know, a fridge full of food and all kinds of stuff, which you'll see in a minute in the back. Then all the gear we need for full-time travel, we've got to be aware that we're going to be going through several seasons. So it's not like we're going out for a weekend trip. We've got to carry winter clothing, summer clothing, uh, rain gear. We've got to be ready for all situations. This on the side is an awning that comes out and it can protect us from, you know, extreme extreme sunlight we can kind of find shelter under there or if it's raining and then on top of our roof rack we have these two rooftop tents and that's where we sleep these guys just pop up our bedding stays in there we can have a very comfortable sleep and it handles pretty decent uh, cold weather typically what we're doing is chasing summer so if it gets into really you know snowy freezing cold weather we move our, our way south as you can imagine everything is about weight and space with just two vehicles and so many people so we've learned over the years what we need to carry and what we don't we have all kinds of little things like this this tire table to give us extra table space in terms of water we have these Lifesaver water filtration units. So we can actually just dip them into a stream or a river or a lake, even a muddy bog, and it will filter the water out and come out purified on this end. That's how we handle water. If you're wondering, you know, if you're in the back country for a long time, you don't have the luxury of a fresh water source. These things are great. We have these steel bumpers installed and then a heavy duty uh, 10,000 pound winch. And we've used that a lot. We've got stuck in, in snow situations or mud situations where that has come in handy and, and got us out of trouble. So that's kind of what we have in the front. Under the hood, we have a dual battery system. Uh, we have a little solar plug in there, which allows us to maintain those batteries. And one uh, obviously is for starting the vehicle. And the second one runs the lights and accessories in the fridge and so on. Uh, we have a snorkel on here which has definitely come in handy over the years in deep water but mostly for dust in the desert you know that engine's working hard so we got to do whatever we can to keep that thing healthy we're, we're running uh, 35 inch tires on here plus a, a lift on the suspension that helps keep us as a high clearance 4x4 and gets us into the backcountry like this simple things like hinge steps that allow us to get up and get things up off the roof rack so that's very handy this is the ladder that gets us up to the sleeping quarters above and the last thing I talk about is uh, fuel we get asked a lot how do you you know have store enough fuel to get way into the backcountry and so we have a, a 10 gallon um, spare tank there a fuel caddy but we also have uh, what they're, they're called long-range America auxiliary fuel tanks that are fitted underneath both of the Jeeps and that doubles our fuel capacity so we can run out of fuel in the in the wilderness hit a button and we'll have a full tank again. So 
that that's kind of handy. Now I'm going to introduce you to Carol, come and show you the kitchen, because that's a very important part of overlanding is eating food <laughs> and storing food and keeping food and all everything that revolves around that for five grown adults. Let's go back there and take a look at how Carol manages all that. It's really simple and I wanted to keep it super simple. So this is my kitchen counter right here and it just folds up, tucks away really nice. Um, and then I have the two burner and then I keep a, you know, a small bit of my supplies here. And then this can just uh, slide out with my fridge here. It just gives me a lot so I can get in here. You can see it's full of food here. Um, I also have the propane tank here mounted with optional water coming out from here. And then I have my kitchen lights and then some USBs up here so I can be charging or, or maybe playing some nice cozy music. I keep all my cast iron in this uh, front runner box and then this is a pantry here and then I have blenders and different uh, coffee supplies and um, things like that. I keep all my bowls, measuring cups, everything in here. My uh, wash bays are up here so I can take those down and I have a table underneath the front runner rack that turns into um, my kitchen sink and that's really been a neat addition to our little cozy house on wheels. I really like trying to keep that coziness of home and the meals and so it's not just hot dogs and hamburgers every single night or you know ramen. Um, I love cooking over open fire um, just it, it gives all the smells and, and senses of an actual home. I hope you guys like this. I hope it inspired you to get out there and cook and enjoy your family or your spouse or like your loved ones, even your four-legged one. All right, so this is uh, Worsley. This is a 2019 um, Rubicon. We built it very similar to the first Jeep because we had figured out what we need, what we don't need, and uh, what we liked, what worked. And so we went with the same winch, uh, slight differences based on what was available, but steel bumpers, we have bigger tires, 37s on here, and a lift, but it, other than that, you know, a lot of things are the same. We have the same rooftop tent, same roof rack, and, and it's very functional. It just gives us that much more space, because obviously over the years, the kids have grown up. They used to fit in the back of the one Jeep, not so anymore. Everybody's six footer around here. Plus we added our dog to the mix, so gear keeps changing and, and expanding, so we've been, uh, just figuring out the best way to do it as we go along. We have a second fridge in this vehicle, so that gives Carol more storage space for food. And we like to eat a lot of fresh meals and cook meals similar to what Chad cooks on, the, on an open fire and what we enjoyed last night. So that requires a fair bit of fridge space. And then the other thing about this one is we uh, did what's called a seat delete. We remove 60% uh, of the back seat and replace it with a sleeping platform by a company called Goose Gear. That helps us convert our interior of our Jeep into a camping, a camper. So Caroline, our daughter, she edits a lot of her videos and so she works in there and sleeps in there and it makes a really cozy camper for her. Um, so that's kind of the basics of this Jeep. We also have the dual batteries and so on for, for power and electric uh, charging up all our equipment. Um, a lot of people ask us how, do you, you don't have a restroom in there, what's your bathroom situation? And so it's very, very simple. We found these, uh, this is called a thunder box and it folds out into a, a very comfortable toilet that can be set up easily pretty much anywhere. And, and then this is, a, this is called a green elephant tent and uh, you, that thing sets itself up. You just throw it out and it sets up a little pop-up tent for privacy. You can take a shower in it and use it as a restroom, so. Well, I have had an absolute fantastic time coming out here with these folks. They are true salt of the earth and just such great folks. And I've had a blast just sitting around, talking adventure, talking overlanding, talking life. And uh, it's good after so much time of being solo out here on the road to uh, come out camping with some some other folks that enjoy the same type of stuff. So uh, we wrapped up camp out here at Chicken Corners. Now we are going to head back eastbound into Moab and enjoy this journey on the way back into town. Here, 
like this. No hands. About to head back on the trail. It's gonna be pretty exciting. It was such a nice ride in. I'm really excited to hit it again. There's some spots that we know now and you know little cutoffs for the bikes and stuff, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. We've got all packed up, the boys got all ready, and now we're gonna hit the trail back to Moab. I think it was a great camp spot, delicious meal last night. Thank you for that. Had a lot of fun uh, hanging out. I'm looking forward to the trail today. Just carrying on, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think this is one of my favorite places I've camped at so far. So thank you very much. That's it's awesome. It was awesome learning how your whole world works, and the food was delicious. So let's hit the trail. guys well we have made it down out of Hoorah Pass and the rough and rugged trail that takes you all the way out to Chicken Corners. We're now airing up the vehicle so that we can hit the highway. I hope you guys enjoyed this adventure and hanging out with the epic family road trip. If you guys haven't checked out their content yet make sure and go on over and check out their channel. And don't forget to check out Peter and Dan's channel The Adventure Guys and check out some of the motorcycle stuff that they are doing out here in the backcountry as well. All right, guys, I'd say this wraps up this here van adventure. If you've made it this far into the video and you're not yet subscribed, make sure and do so. And if you do hit that subscribe button, make sure and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that's what's going to notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. Make sure and hit the like button, share with any friends that you think might enjoy this type of adventure. Most importantly, leave your comment in the feedback section down below. All right, guys, we'll see you down the road on the next Living the Van Life adventure. Peace out. Keep on trucking.